since you've been gone. Fine way, bro. Since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, doesn't it, in the world? Um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer. <laughs> funny, yeah. Uh, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah. Very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I went. Before I left. Yeah, there are some of your, uh, your old bacon rinds. <laughs> <that sandwich. laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh, no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership's changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last radar? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think everyone gets new listeners because I think what happens is the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of yeah, you know, smack addictions. <laughs> yeah, gout. Yeah. <laughs> gout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I've never haven't listened to this um, station for a year and a half, so. So that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is qu probably quite a high percentage. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I, uh, yeah, well, I, I mean. I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, bored, you're a bit bored of sitting at home. <laughs> right, you know. Okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um. Well, we're standing in for Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The tables have turned. I remember when they were standing in for us, but. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't know. But I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is because um my um my housekeeper cleans um between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I sort of get out of the house. And. uh are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then, um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her. In yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is, uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais, they associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality, you've put a lot of work into them, you've mm. honed it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No, definitely not. Th those things that you know, you, you sit down with, you know, we sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them. We worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely should, right. Should we play some great yeah, records? Play a great record now. You too. City of Blinding Light. I, I tell you what, I love you two now. Yeah. I honestly hated them, sort of everything from Boy up to about, I think, um, Beautiful Day when that came out. I thought, oh, that's all right. Listen to the album, listen to this album. I love them now, Steve. It's a turnaround, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, I, that's, it's, it's that kind of um, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I it's sound like Dr. Fox then, didn't I? I tell you what, I'm and wants and needs. Uh, Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show, because, uh, you know, uh, we, we go to the Golden Globes the same month, we do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really I'm still hard. talking about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got yeah. to let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. No, but then again, you know, he's a medical man and... Yeah, well, uh, you know, you've got you to believe him a bit. his opinion. You know, exactly, yeah. Right. Yeah, I could have done without the rectal examination. I think he could have just said... <laughs> You're not very good. <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl had to. You had to um, uh, go, go, go to one of those um, well clinics, no, didn't I you? Didn't, so no, I haven't gone. Why? Because I'm, I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just the people know what them places places are. We'll like, give you a whole. Have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, they 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 take they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go unless I think I'm, I'm honestly gonna die there. I'm in agony. Think like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do that. It's yeah, cut under quid and they give you a com complete head to toe, don't they? But but head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the arse thing. Now, what is that testing for? Well, I like oh, that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio. You know, you can't say ass. Yeah. Well, I say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly. Yeah, yeah. Ass. Yeah, ass. That's what um, our mistake was, because we got um, a complaint up how, didn't we, for saying, and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know. Yeah, and we yeah. said that word, right? So if we'd have gone cock, we'd have probably gotten away with it. 
You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it very So go on then, yeah, so. Go on So, yeah, no, I just, uh, I just, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what, what they're going to find up there. That's. Your head? No, why can't you just, I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. Do you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know, if They'd you They'd have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Like this thing about- this thing about the, uh, doctors, they- they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it, sort of, like, by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I- I- I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your- your diaphragm or something like that, you can't- you can't do it when they press there. I don't know. It it shows you, them something. So it's not it's not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, that's good because do you remember when Carl said he's going to die of cancer, and I said why? He said I don't check me balls. I said why? He said I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you. They they feel them for you, and you can you can just relax, shut your eyes, and think of England. But don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them. Just leave them. And it's <laughs> two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah. I don't think that's the point. I think the, the point is it- it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it-, it you've gotta mm. check the- I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if- don't- don't do it, cause they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not- I, I'm- I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why? why, out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate? Yeah. Cause if it's swollen, it's- it could, yeah, it- it could, you know, could lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look at this bald little wank fella. But there's no uh, nice way. I'll feel his ball, <laughs> stick a finger up his ass and send him home. 300 <laughs> quid, please, on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, la they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going anyway. Sorry. Really, you're not going because you don't want... No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter. It's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. That'd be worse! Imagine that! At a dinner party. Oh, God. Oh, hello, 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 Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind? Roger, do you mind? Uh, <laughs> would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it, though? Dr. Dre, uh, Dr. Fox, Fox, any of those. Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> would you allow Christopher Eggleston to stick his <laughs> big right, northern finger at you? Do you a song on, anyway? <laughs> what? <laughs> Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that that they may not, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man. A crone. Yeah, and he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And, but, he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns, and three years later you're exactly where you started. <laughs> so, good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington yeah. to um, our new you, you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah, when I say mind, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought, what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website. Have you got a oh, website? Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like... Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it? What's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Dot com, yeah, S forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash. K dash man forward slash the K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again. Say it again. But get a pencil right. now. They've all got a pencil now. Freewebs dot com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now, when you say dash, is it is it a dash or is it is, is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore? Is it is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it the, is it at the bottom? It's just just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> <laughs> He's even scared of like uh, doing some uh, uh, with a friend or you know, uh, getting a gift because he goes after buying one back now. Yeah, it's sort of like life's a bit of a chore for Carl, isn't it? Well, anyway, all right. Let's leave that aside. Obviously, you're never going to be entirely happy. Although apparently you are already 
on the brink of happiness. All you have to say is your hair look nice. That's all you have to say. Yeah, it looks good, yeah. And that's it. End of story. What's the point in that? What is the point in that? Because she doesn't re- she doesn't really care what you think, but she doesn't want to hear that she looks like Dave Hill from Slade. She's not having her hair cut just to please you, Carl. Despite what you might think. <laughs> yeah. He's taken aback by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, happiness then, yeah. All right, so, well, listen, I, I was happy the other week, right, when I was going up to Manchester on the train, mm. nice quiet carriage, I'm sat there reading about sharks and that, right? <laughs> nice, yeah. nice and quiet. And I got annoyed, I texted you, didn't I? Yeah. When, uh, two fellas got on. Um, can we talk about it? Well, yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you've started it. Two gay men got on. Go on. Two gay fellas got on. Yeah. And it wasn't the fact that they were gay that bothered me. It no. was like, you know, each to their own. Let sure. them get, you know what I mean? Let yeah. them do what they do. Yeah. And, um, Behind closed doors. But they started talking really loud. <laughs> right. And they were going on about, uh... That's annoying up. anyway. That's annoying whether you're straight or gay. Yeah, yeah, Mate, yeah, 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 yeah. Talking too loud. But do you know the theory I have about <laughs> they go out late? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gay people always go out late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we're, yeah, I mean, what, what, what time do you go out in the evening? Uh, 7.30. If you go out about 7.30, yeah. if you, yeah. you know, if I'm out of work, I might, I might go out about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Mm. I guarantee I'll sort of be in bed by about half 12. Sure. At that time, they're still sort of ironing the jeans. <laughs> right? And, and the funny thing was, <laughs> I, I've, <laughs> in their jeans. I've always said this, right? <laughs> Dalton and, and you, sort, you sort of said that's rubbish. I'm sat on the train reading about sharks. These two are talking and they're going, oh, we can't wait to get there. And his phone goes and he goes, uh, hello? And, uh, on the end, he goes, anyway, I'll, I'll see you at one then. Right? Right. So I thought, well, maybe that's tomorrow. Yeah. Could be one in the afternoon. That's when most people would meet. Yeah. And then he carried that's on talking. most people would meet! He carried on talking, and he goes, yeah, so anyway, like I say, see you tonight. One o'clock is meeting someone. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't know You're why he's out that late. Do you remember when his favourite record of all time is The Killing of Georgie? Sure. He said, would he have been killed if he'd have been <laughs> back at a decent time? <laughs> Uh, there's no mention point. of the time sure. in this song. And then the funny, the funny bit was actually that did make me laugh, right? Uh, when he finished talking on the phone, he said to his partner, right, uh, oh, there you go, let's have a little chat. And the fella said, who was that? And he said, oh, it's, it's Dave. He said, which one's Dave? He said, you know, the one with the shaved head. I thought, in the gay community, yeah, that isn't a good description. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So I've got, well, I've got little shaved heads. Before we move on, was the Sharks article interesting? Did you learn anything? It was pretty good. Was it? Go yeah, on, I'll teach it? you something about that later. Oh, okay. Uh, is, this, is, is this educating Ricky? Uh, wasn't, but I can, I can te- teach you a bit. Yeah? Alright. That's good. Play some ads on that. Play some ads on a tune, and then have we got maybe a competition? Yeah. All what right. have we got? We're all looking forward to that. Uh-huh. Fortune Faded. Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours a day, then a Monday off. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down into the depths for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be- Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna say it. Um, I think Shed 7 have split up. Sorry, I didn't- Shed 7 have split up. Uh, <clears throat> I, sorry, I think I got something in my eye. <laughs> uh, it's just a bit dusty now, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true. If not, we got their- at least we got their music. Their music- <laughs> The music- <laughs> The music lives on. So we're gonna dedicate this show- Shed 7. And all the bands they- Influence. Influence. So we're just gonna play. Just every 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 artist that that formed a band after they'd heard Shed Seven, just play them from now on, and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed Seven hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website. It said about, "Is it true Shed Seven is split up?" And the next, you know, one of those dorky message boards, someone came on and said, "You are joking." <laughs> 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 oh. Oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that, uh, uh, it's just a rumour. It is just a rumour, yeah. Then oh, it's, it's, it's just, just, just call in if it's true. Um, maybe Well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, it, well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, <laughs> he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, uh, uh call in and say, what, what was the split all about? <laughs> Tell you what I, uh, read about. Sharks, monkeys, or jellyfish? Uh, 
it's, it's ten past, isn't it? We haven't, uh, we haven't done a, a little bit of knob news. <laughs> no, right. we haven't had knob news, no. But, um, It's been three months. It's been, it's been three months coming. There's this, there's this thing, uh, I don't know the full story, I don't know how it happened, right, but little, little Russian, uh, little Russian fella. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, sort of having a, uh, sort of emptying his bladder, right, and yeah. somehow electrocuted himself. Right. right. And, uh, sort of did a bit of damage. How did he, well, he, he I, I don't know, some I don't live know. Wires or something. something like that. So did anyway. he damage to himself or to an electric fire or something? No, to himself. To himself. Yeah. And, um, so the doctor- Didn't, didn't slip and t curling tongs went up his ass when he was pissed because <laughs> that, that's happened a lot in yeah, we've hospitals. All been we've, all, we've all- we've all- we've all the old curling tongs up the ass <laughs> when having a piss. Right. So, um, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> no, no, I'm not interested! I'm interested! Oh, I can't, we're interested! You can't right? be bothered, you get Mondays off, do some work. Right, so anyway, so the doctor says, oh, it's not looking good, we'll have to set that off. Mm. What? He's like, the, oh. uh, uh, no yeah. Really? <laughs> But the funny thing is, right? Nothing funny about that. They've done, uh. You're doing me heading. You're doing <laughs> Just me tell the today. story! Just doing me heading. Oh, you can chill out I've on Monday. Got, I've only got 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you every Saturday. I'm gonna get the money's worth out of this, because you get Mondays off. And I can't, uh, I can't bear the fact someone getting away with something like that, because it's terrible. So you're gonna stick this out, or you're gonna have to work Mondays. So take it on the chin, mm. right? Okay. Just finish the story. Yes. I command you. Just do it. Anyway, so they've, they said, he said, you know, you, will you be able to sort me a uh, little knob out? A prosthetic right? no. yeah. yeah. But, they put him out, yeah. for the operation. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah. Right, and he's thinking, oh, thank God that's over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> They've only grown it on his arm. What are you talking about? <laughs> you twat. Shut the f- d d d d you're an idiot. What do you mean they've grown it on his arm? Apparently, like, that's- that's- the way they do it. Oh, yeah, but to, to then put it on, that, that, that wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a doctor going, did it go there? <laughs> Some bloke didn't, I didn't do a degree. Are you a real doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but why, why put it there? Because it's got a graph, because it's got a grow, it's got a graph there, so where they can control it. To skin, the to skin tissue. But on your arm. Well, but they're gonna remove it or... from the arm, it's, what do you mean on the back? On your back. Somewhere, well, we can't wear a t-shirt. Yeah, but you can- you can He's in hospital! He, he, th this way he can still have a little tug, no, can't no, he? But they'll leave it there for quite a bit. It's not- Do you know what I mean? It's not gonna be like, oh, it's just there for a few days. Yeah. It's there for a bit. That's not good, is it? So he's got a cock on his arm? Yeah, what's up with that? What do you mean, what's up with that? Well, I mean, it, it, we could say it's a- it's a- it's a thumb or something, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they- they remove but, it! Be good and for hitching. It down it, below if, if you had if you had a knob instead of a thumb and you went hitchhiking, just tickle it. And they can see it like a mile down the road, couldn't they? They're <laughs> Posting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd lost my knob, I'd go, Oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tits on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think oh, I'll have a just forget it. But, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? <laughs> you know. On the forehead. <laughs> Listen, let's- are we doing a competition? Let's play a tune, let's just- let's Come just, on, let's just... Carl, you can't be bothered! Right, oh, okay, we're gonna scrap this and you're gonna work Mondays again. So- so you had him, right? right there was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is- yeah, I assume right. it's cause he was at the same IQ as you. Or- yeah. or- or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There was- there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah, he had- he had like loads of- Tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God! The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself. <sighs> the ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so so there was him. Oh, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here, that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze. In the uh, was it late seventies, early eighties? Sort of early eighties. And uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets, and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly. I think it started off with like lorry truckers drivers, and isn't that. it? Yeah, truckers. Yeah, because there was that that thing from like about nineteen seventy 
Convoy. Several hours. Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so I had one of them, and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilky O one, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that in Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky O two, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um... <laughs> that is, that is people scrabbling for, oh, yeah. I want a, Pil <laughs> a Pilky O one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's boxer boy and that. Yeah. So, just had them two, and I used to just go on there and... Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just, you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, what's your handle? You go, box boy, what's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, but then, but then you'll say, like, then you go, oh, uh, uh, what's your 20? What's that mean? That's, where are you? Well, why don't you say, where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who, who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. I, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what's the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, all right. How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Round what's your that, 20? That's the round again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, what's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. Emily from New York has asked uh, Carl this. Carl, if you were on a... a a sinking ship, or you were in a, a burning building, and you were with uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us. I don't know why that's the case, but you can only save one of us. Yeah. Who would you save? Would it Is be it... Ricky, or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, okay. Possibly. And we're trapped, and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing... <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he forms. dies, so he's got so he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point? What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, no, just, <laughs> just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. Okay, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're gonna have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know, in 30 seconds, okay, this ship's gonna go under and drag you down and you're gonna die, right? Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long, does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible, a terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, no, listen, this is the boy. He's going to drown in thirty seconds. Well, we'll get him. <laughs> so, bear in mind this, Carl. You are going to be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's going to be going on, the comments, the wind. And do you honestly think that he's going to, if there's any provisions, that he's going to split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's going to have drunk all the water, and it's only going to be about half an hour in. The food's going to have been gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, the, oh. of the food he's going to have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or on. it's me. You know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go. Carl, he's, I think he's uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on. Think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? What? <laughs> what? The time, the time when... 
we went for a coffee and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision. But you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's my decision. Who but you just, you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but yes, but that was that did not come to you. And you didn't pay for the free keg of beer. It, it was a promotional thing that was sent to you. Doesn't, it's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before. Yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after however many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter. She wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, stop just... arguing us. You're rocking the dinghy. <laughs> Carl, have some of my cheese. <laughs> imagine if he would, do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you going to save Carl, mate? I, I don't want to say. Well, think about it and... I might do a sort of a... A for and against or something, and then sort of so sort of the conclusion is okay. All right. A few people have sent this in, including Paul, the party animal Parker. For some reason, we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But do I, you reckon, think I reckon he left in June, and he's doing sort of bits and pieces. But he's still not a party animal. Do you think? I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that he can hold down a job? Um, he often arrives late, sure. and, the, and the boss who's in over will go, Parker. You're late again. He goes, yeah. Talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, c you know, he'll just happily say, "Listen, I can I survive on four hours sleep." Yeah. Sometimes I go to work. I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his uh, 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 headphones blaring, right, on a on a skateboard, mm -hmm. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy duddy bloke, goes, "You, you stupid idiot! You can't work there." And he goes, "He goes, chill out, man." And in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. Yeah, he is just like he just can't resist it because he's yeah. just he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, that, that you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. Exactly. It's like those old sort of horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. And you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as, as a person. Say, like, how they can do um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have if, if you have something done to your face and you go you know it's burnt or whatever or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant well if you change if you totally changed your appearance then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you yeah but I, so I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant soon you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't be yourself because I wouldn't of the, have it I wouldn't have that that's what I'm saying if they had a catalog yeah. and they said here's some faces you can have pick which one you want yeah would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what, I don't really like the look of any of them, can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have in no, the face No, they do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for, uh, they wait till someone... Yeah, I know, but at some point... Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm going to have it. You... <laughs> you have to... <laughs> I want to see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What, do you know what I mean? Whose head are they going to use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. <laughs> Bro, where did this come from? Where was his mind? Where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to, to put well, all these... Well, 
Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> talk then. Someone should talk. It's obviously already, already a shambles. Can you believe that? I, I, I'm amazed that we're back on the air and it's already a shambles. What are you doing? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking, no one was speaking, the record was ending, no one was speaking, it was just Kate. Well, I'm actually off. <laughs> already, I'm actually off. It's Bit like we, nothing's changed. Boys are back in town, on XFM 104.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? Mm -hmm. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Well, Rick, I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never gonna do the show again, yeah. there was nothing that was gonna bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't gonna do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him co coming back for so about two months, you know, cause he's got our agent now, representing him. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was a fool, really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham, and it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening, no one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking with the record then, cause it, there's, no, it's, there's no loss. Sure. To London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money, we don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I'm not gonna have to lie in. I know. But, um, it's all a ruse to get Mondays off. He's got Mondays off now, cause he has to do the show, two hours, Tonight. right? And he's still getting paid, and it's all a con because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel, and he's, uh, it's like, oh, we gotta keep Carl happy. Mm. Right? I had, I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 no, but you know what I mean, though? No. And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes and goes, well, I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mondays off. And they, uh, he's probably sitting home now, his family, he's probably ridiculed by- Yeah. His well, wife. his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. That he's been fooled mates, by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mates and goes, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham. I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just- It's, it's embarrassing. Just, but it's, do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny and you think you've got one over him, he's going, oh, Mondays off for two enough. hours. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do. You think about it. Like, and now you're not embarrassed because you're still on air. But uh -huh. you're only, you're only, you're only conning yourself in the long run because, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get, what can I get out of the world? What are you gonna give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you gonna prepare Mondays? No, I told you, what I have you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What have you, what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? For three months, we're turning up back, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've, we, I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it. If something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good. It was never good. No, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do. It was a laugh. I mean, much more, I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? you? You sounds like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> um, I said, like I, he's I, talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I it's said, like having, having my head scrolls, right? <laughs> What? Squares! Squares is still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right. Yeah. I said he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. Ah! <laughs> 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 so. Okay then, what has changed in three months? It's like they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now. Come on, give us something. Bit of Nickelback. What's, <laughs> no, what's happened in three you days? Play a record well, what, what, three months? You, what, in my life or yeah. in here? Nothing's yeah. happened there, nothing's changed there. Right. But, I don't know, well, well, uh, do you know, do you know last time we were on? Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where the I one, live. The one that walked around naked? There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked, this right? is when, uh, Carl was watching a woman naked, then she looked at so, saw him looking, so what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this, he pulled his pants down so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went, I can't tell you now, but don't look out of the window. 
<laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. That woman, she's, uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs> Nickelback, someday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. He reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fate to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like <laughs> the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. No, uh, I'll be controversial. I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Do you know so. what I mean? Are we gonna hear some rock later in the show? We're gonna hear lots of rock. Excellent. In fact, I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, rewind. We've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just hope, folks. Yeah, 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 So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. Oh, well, certainly, before we, uh, Go carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird, I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we've got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually, it divides the listeners, is your laugh. It's interesting, some people love it, they find it infectious, they yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space, like a kitchen Terrifying. or something, it's annoying. Like, Horrific. Carl was annoyed, because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? He was on the toilet. <laughs> I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, no, it's not one o'clock He doesn't yet. like the squeezing. The squeezing head. But, yeah. Um, but He's it the squeezing one. The funny thing is, right, we were out a few weeks ago with, with a mate of mine, mm. right, and uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right, give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And uh, I was like, don't do that, you know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head squeeze. As if it's like Marmite. As if, <laughs> as if some people love it. Yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. there's but there's the, there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the belly yeah. laugh. But there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do. Well, I've got to get air out quickly because exactly. I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all like, they try and get out of it. So I have to get out really fast, like a like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that is that how you explain <laughs> the fact that you're you're quite fat? Yeah, it's that's actually laugh. that's just laughing waiting it's to come out. Every yeah. time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing like <laughs> yeah. Brett Anderson. Oh dear. Well, anyway, it reminded me of the uh, the game that you you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM when it was literally. Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Lovely. was a great game. I think. I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah. I remember yeah. the very first time. It yeah. never, I tell you what, it's you not great. You know what great. though? Ant and Deck do it now. They do. do they? they actually. It's very similar to Make Ricky laugh. It's called Make Ant laugh. <laughs> Interesting. So. So many of our great ideas have been uh, have been stolen. Yeah. Or stoled. Stoled. Yeah. And anyway, I just I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a on. picture which um. <laughs> Which I think might, it might be a Ricky Gervais, <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try yeah. and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, because it's like a Dave Gorman project? Can we just stop, let's, I, it's getting, it, it, let's say a word often enough, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what we're gonna refer to you as. <laughs> Alright, well, make Patty laugh <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is a new, a new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm okay. concerned because well, I know. I, I, no, I'm not going to. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure a you're not a performing monkey. Well, no, okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, <laughs> a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a child, a neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist. Then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, <laughs> this is a is quote. This is a quote from him. Right. right? Bear in mind, he's a fourteen-year-old boy. He's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, "Then we had sex. It was every boy's fantasy." <laughs> All right. You're going to show me the picture of her now, aren't so you? So it's a picture of her. Oh, this is not. Bear right. in mind. This is. Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. <laughs> He's collapsed on the floor. I wasn't floor. expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like the drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> but, I tell you she looks like- she <laughs> make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those- I don't think they've got one with a fag on as well! <laughs> no, I know! It's just the- uh, the uh, show with them out uh, of makeup though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see- you should see- <laughs> Oh, oh God! Oh, 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 oh God! How, how old is she? <laughs> forty-eight. Oh, oh God! Oh, forty-eight. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with that. I'd say if you don't know what, if you didn't see, we weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture. She looks just <sighs> like 
the um, oldest man in the world. I was uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St James's and those really beautiful shops around there and I went in one shop, you had to um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. They came down and it's like a, a iconoclastic sort of shop and they, they found things from churches and uh, r uh, nearly all Russian 16th century pieces onwards. This beautiful uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues and I went, oh, it's beautiful. And as I was looking round, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go, what's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah. Sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask of a man who's clearly in antiques, yes. um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century, uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? Is that, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what does he want to say, oh, my shirt? What, what, <gasps> what were, were you thinking? looking for? Uh, I think it's an alright question, because he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there and he kept going on about the old stuff. <laughs> so what did to say? Well, what, what's, what, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was the Do you know what he thing? said to The other question he asked him? He said, how often do you get new stuff in? And I said to him, why did you ask that? He said, well, I was thinking, if you've got antiques and you sell it all, what's left? Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making... He said, because they're not making any new stuff. What does that mean? They're not making any new stuff. But I know for a fact, no one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go, I need some old Russian wood. Cause that's, it was that's, brilliant! No, it was, I, Steve, it, no. it was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff, there, it's, there's, mm. um, um, uh, these things, uh, from the 16th century of sort yeah. of like saints and monks, and they're carved, but and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was him, I'd go, do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shot. <laughs> because seriously, it's just piled up, up piles up on piles of like old, Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But think of, man, just think of a man 400 years ago that carved this, that carved this, uh, you know. No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh, look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what I'd love. What? A bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't happen. That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying it like, I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, them old drawings on like... It was like a panel from a church that someone had d d okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was like, you know, from sort of like 1590 or something. Yeah. And it was this, uh, a, a picture of this, uh, this mm. saint, wasn't it? So 1590. It could be from any time, really. So there's this one there, right, leaning up against the wall. And, uh, <laughs> most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little... Right, can I stop with there? Lenin. Right, okay. alright then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff, but I saw this other little face, right, little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so, uh, I said, who's this bloke here? He said, oh, uh, the story there, right? He said, uh, it's this little fella, and he got mugged back in Russia. <laughs> This is right, isn't it? This is what he was yeah. saying. He said he got more. This is that, that term. That, I love that, that term in, in a 16th century Russian wood. Oh, no, I'm being mugged. So, so he, he got mugged. He got happy slapped. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he said, I've had enough of this. Right? Yeah. And he went to live in the woods, right? Made like a little shed. Stayed there. People went to visit him. And, and like, if you've got a problem, you knock on his door and you go, oh, I'm sick of it. And he'll sort of say, yeah, I know what you mean. I've, I've moved out of the city and what have you. And he'd make him feel better. And then they go again. Now, why has that man <laughs> got a plaque? <laughs> if he was around now, there's no way he'd have a bit of wood with his face on it, is what I'm saying. If someone had got fed up with living in London or New York or whatever, and they go, I'm gonna go and live in the woods, people wouldn't visit him, and he wouldn't get a piece of wood with his face on, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but this man is selling it for about, I think it was about 750 quid for, for this bloke's head. But the chances are that this is either a well-known Russian folktale, or it may even be a piece of classic Russian He's literature. He's a saint. He was a saint. Or, oh, okay. He was well, canonised. Yeah. Yeah. Like everybody, everybody was a saint years ago. That seems to be, like, thrown about, doesn't it? He was a saint now. Name him one now. Yeah, this fella lived in a woods in a hut. Oh, yeah, that's Saint John or whatever. <sighs> he's not a saint. He's done nothing. If anything, he sort of said, I can't be bothered with living in a city with everyone else. Everyone else has got to put up with it, but I can't put up with it. I'm going to live in the woods. Well, if you can't put up with it, you're not good enough, are you? You've got no stamina. <laughs> And yet he gets a plaque, is what I'm saying. It's annoying. Who would, you like to see, who would you like to see get a plaque in the modern world? Who deserves a plaque, in your opinion? Probably, like, nurses and that, who, who do a lot of bad things that I think I couldn't do that. Carrying lungs about and all that. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, but I, I couldn't do, do you know what I mean? That's, that's one job that... Oh. I, my mum wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, <laughs> 
Wow. Wow. What was she wow. thinking? Oh, what's oh, her expectations this like apple now? This didn't fall far from the tree. Oh, when did she start giving up that dream? At what age did she start going, Carl, you don't need to study your books anymore. Go, go and play with the worms in the garden. When did she sort of, like, let you off that dream? Is it the day that she caught you with a spoon up your nose? <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, talking of emails and that, right, uh, Nick, who's emailed from Australia, right, Melbourne, he's, uh, he's, he's been going on about dolphins and that, problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when, when that, that wind happened, <laughs> um, there was like a bad wind thing going on. Hold on, wait a minute, what, what bad wind? Um, in, in America, they had that... Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it. And right. With all guns on them and stuff. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Because they use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training, they're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. Got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? They've got, How can they got hold weapons? the rifle? They've got, How can they got, hold a rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you I mean it's on what, a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, That's not the point, so let's leave it. So they're swimming about. Right? Yeah, with, with rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah. Like, ready for, for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle, yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Makes Makes a wave and that. They get out of the little bay. Yeah. Still all kitted out. With all the, you know, weapons. You're talking that. bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the email? Well, there, there's no way. There's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a. Whoa. Again, Nothing. you've been watching Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punk, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly. Because there's some with weapons now, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading it out on email. That's that, that'll cover it and that. So bollocks. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, "Carl, you rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture. Although your head is not normal." That's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> That's all you've got to say. Well, it's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> it's perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. It always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head. Um, pug little nose, funny gimp eyes with no expression, hangdog look, um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey, not formed, not human formed. The, the way your expression it, it is like you've had a lobotomy. Your head goes weird at the back, it's got a little nod in it, like a, 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 it's, it's really strange, your face, and you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing, but... Um, talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of, I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned, Carl, that you'd, uh, you'd only recently seen a, uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh, yeah. And it really surprised you, because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless before, person. No, and no. I actually went along with that. I, uh, I've never, I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, now, I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there, because apparently there's a huge homeless community in, uh, in Los Angeles. So definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person. And although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them, and she could not find any on that particular day. So, um, again, Canada, obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless. It, it was just a point, though. I don't want people sort of... Well, hold on, though. Wait, well, I'll stop you there. Hello, Ricky, Steve and Carl. I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person. Not only is he Chinese, but he is also a midget. He's been living on the streets for the last 30 years. He used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive, he's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him ten bucks to take the picture, um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fellow. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there, sort of, looking for these. 
because well, it, because well, you know well, that's what you requested. No, no, no. But all I was saying is, I saw one. I didn't start saying, "Excuse me, can you just give us a smile? I'm taking your picture." <laughs> You know well, we've I mean? had loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of the little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't, don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Put it down! Have a, have a go. <laughs> That's the oh. sort of level we're talking about! Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl Dodgson. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I thought what, what we could do is we could hide that. <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine Bill Gates! <laughs> yeah, for a teacher. <laughs> in an exam. <laughs> Pop down both. <laughs> uh, multiple choice! Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. What so particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> um, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, mm. so, here's the first up, first question, alright? You got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you wurzel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? <laughs> Already- <laughs> No, Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> no, no, but, but what, do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? I'm like happy? I imagine it's a 24-hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with it. So, Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes, and beans for a for tea. Yeah, you you're not in, yeah. Right, well, let's move on. We'll come back to that one. You know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for. Uh, well, what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I I wouldn't have the I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. See, I'm not some... a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So yeah. your idea of um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers. Just the fish fingers. Okay, good. All right. Second question: What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm, going to the doctors. Like so know. more, so so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it. You see? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't <laughs> any particular doctor. <laughs> I don't want to live forever either. No, I just no. The beginnings. I just want to get to about eighty, eighty-three, eighty-four. <laughs> 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 Specific. Yeah. Okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill is pretty good. You like yeah, him? it's very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I love that, that, that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, don't it? Go on. Oh, I think something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <coughs> they don't, they don't, they don't kill what, people what, now what, for uh, uh, parking what, illegally. What, but what sort of, what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know, but what is that? What, what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine, hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's not, all bad. Why, mm, why, why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's what's the point in keeping them? You know, people people around. Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like right, that's that Don. Who's who's next? Do you know what, I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> <laughs> he 
same <laughs> poem on a radio show. <laughs> yeah. Play a right, next card. question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the Thorns. Yeah, that Maybe one. you're less familiar with the, uh, different elements of the Thorns mm. solo work. No, no. Track from Matthew Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. That was great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of prep happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, he's on the edge look. of that, he's yeah. on the edge of that, you think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or some. Uh, he always picks up on the wrong side. You know, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a fourteen-year-old French exchange student. Yeah. You know, their, yeah. their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly. But it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way. I like him because he's stupid mm. in a way. Mm. <laughs> No, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of, though, Rick, when you think of the, Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, gonna help me out with some of the research, and I wanna, I want him to do some on the DVD for it, right? And, uh... He, um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that in the future, they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space, and it's gonna cost us £150,000. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, the, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went, <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're expanding- Are we talking about the finger in the arse again there? Or- it's space. What, what is the point in going to- Because you're expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, and the human, uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we gonna do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That what, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile? Like, just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest- What would you be I happy with finding out on the moon? Video? Just, just- just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? That's but what, what I mean is- Well, they is, took that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, Pff. What yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? Well, Africa, just in general. Well, so anywhere the, the, like that, the, desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from, and uh, probably half a million yeah, species of animals lived there. buildings and that, and stuff. Oh, just buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially when we haven't done everything there is to do here. I Go mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff. <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been. <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored, uh, cavern. <laughs> right, right. alright, Steve, would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. Thanks They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that'd be it. He'd, get, yeah. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. So I couldn't see anything, I got shot straight away, I was out of the game, it was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. yeah you don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not, uh, well, yeah, but what, what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Of course you've got to be, what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> the, uh, follow up winners in Pop Idol. I can see it as his, as his eyes glaze. Uh, more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, 
what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably, I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to like, learn stuff now. Yeah. Not, not mentally, but, no, no. He reckons he's learnt more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's <laughs> brilliant it's traffic and that. I yeah. think they were noisy. thinking more. Of more of what, what, what fears have you got? What worries do you do you, do, you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry I don't think about it? There's no point, is there? Because there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? That's <laughs> true. That I is can't, true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on the shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't worry then? about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl.